Top 10 Most Valuable U.S. Coins Found in Pocket Change 1969S Lincoln Cent with a Double Die Obverse This coin is exceedingly rare. The Secret Service confiscated the early specimens until the U.S. Mint admitted they were genuine. Counterfeits abound but usually have the wrong mint mark. However, in May 2014, a mother in Texas found one while going through rolls of coins. PCGs graded the coin AU55, valued at approximately $24,000. Look for an apparent doubling of the entire obverse head side, except for the mint mark. If the mint mark is doubled, it is probably a case of strike doubling rather than a doubled die, which isn't worth much. This is because mint marks were punched into the coin die separately in 1969 after the doubled die had already been made, approximately $40,000 or more in AU50 or better. 1970s small date Lincoln cent with a double die obverse. As with practically all true double die varieties, only one side of the coin shows doubling. If both sides exhibit doubling on any part of the coin, the coin probably exhibits strike doubling instead and is not worth as much as an actual doubled die. The rarer small date variety is most easily distinguished from the standard type by the weakness of liberty. Another way to identify the small date variety is to look at the 7 in the date. If it is level with the other numerals in the date, it is the small date variety. If the numeral 7 is slightly lower, then it is the more common large date variety. The double die obverse is best demonstrated by doubling in LIB and in God We Trust, around $3,500 in EF40 or so. 1972, Lincoln Cent with a double die obverse. The 1972, no mint mark, Lincoln Cent double die variety shows strong doubling on all elements, the Cherry Picker's Guide to Rare Die Varieties, an essential source for this article, suggests using a die marker to help verify your finds. A die marker is a gouge or crack that identifies a particular die from which a coin was made, an apparent doubling of all obverse elements. Look for a tiny gouge near the edge above the D in United as a die marker. You will need at least a 6X magnifier to authenticate this variety. Also, make sure to use a quality light about 18 inches from the coin's surface. This will help you see these minor differences easier. Nearly $1.500 in EF40 or more. 2004D Wisconsin State Quarter with an extra leaf. Variety experts disagree about this type's cause and long-term value, but we've included it in the list because it is very findable in pocket change and worth hundreds of dollars right now. Remember, there should only be one leaf hanging on the left side of the ear of corn. If two leaves are hanging to the left, this is a rare and valuable error coin. There is some defect on the die that makes it appear as if there's an extra leaf on the lower left-hand side of the ear of corn on the reverse. The leaf is very prominent, and a magnifying glass is not necessary to make this observation. Two varieties are known, the high leaf and the low leaf type. Although no counterfeit coins are known to exist, it is just a matter of time before counterfeits of this valuable coin start to appear on the market. Therefore, Ensure your Wisconsin high relief or low leave variety authenticated by a reliable numismatist. Value $200 to $300 in MS60 or so. 1999 Wide AM Reverse Lincoln Cent. This variety is known for three dates 1998, 1999, and 2000, with 1999 being the rarest. The mint erroneously used a proof die to strike standard circulation coins. The AM in America on the reverse is clearly separated in the wide variety. The letters AM are very close or touching in the standard variety for these dates. Value, $5 to $25 in circulated condition, $75 to $600 in MS63 or better depending on color. 1999 brings the highest prices with 2000 being second. 1982, no mint mark Roosevelt dime. At the point in time that the United States Mint made these coins, the coin dies sent to the individual branch mints would be punched with the proper mint mark letter for that branch before shipping. This variety is believed to be caused because one or more non-punched dies were used to make coins. The letter P was being used for coins made at the Philadelphia facility, D for Denver minted coins, and S on dimes minted in San Francisco. Therefore, all coins should have a mint mark. Since this coin has no mint mark, it is moderately valuable. Beware of altered coins that may have had the mint mark removed by an unscrupulous person. The 1982 dime is missing a mint mark. Value, about $1.30 to $1.50 in AU50, more for higher grades. Presidential dollar edge lettering errors. Ever since the first presidential dollar, the Washington dollar issued in 2007, 
There have been errors associated with the lettering on the edge of these coins. The edge lettering is applied to the coin after the coin is struck. In some cases, it is missing entirely. In others, the edge lettering has been placed there multiple times. Look at the edge. The inscription should appear fully encased all around the circumference of the coin. Missing or doubled inscriptions are rare and valuable. Value, $50 to $3,000 depending on the president. 1995 double die, obverse Lincoln sent. This double die variety generated a lot of mainstream interest when it was featured as a cover story in USA Today. Specimens are still being found in circulation all the time. Clear doubling in liberty and in God we trust. Value, about $20 to $40 in uncirculated condition. Certain uncirculated state quarters. As the economy has worsened, people who have been hoarding rolls of state quarters have been spending them into circulation. If you can put together whole rolls uncirculated quarters of certain in-demand states, you can get as much as $1.30 per roll for them. Demand changes from time to time based on major coin dealer promotions. Currently, look for Georgia, Connecticut, Tennessee, and Illinois. Quarters must be uncirculated. Value, $1.20 to $1.52 per roll for strictly uncirculated rolls of certain states. Silver half dollars. Most people think that the silver in U.S. coins ended in 1964, but this isn't true. The half-dollar coin had silver in it until 1970. Many people spend the half-dollars from 1965 to 1970 or sell them in rolls of halves they take to the bank, not realizing they are 40% silver. If the half-dollar is dated 1964 or earlier, it is 90% silver. Halves dated from 1965 to 1970 are 40% silver. You might also find silver-proof half-dollars, which are 90% silver and dated to current. Silver-proof halves have very shiny, mirror-like surfaces, and there is no copper color when you view the edge. Value. Value is based on the silver spot price. 1942, Lincoln, Wheat, Penny. The Lincoln Penny is still being produced today and is still one of the most recognizable pieces of U.S. coinage. Having said that, collectors are really only interested in older versions of the coin, like the 1942 Lincoln. These pennies are collectible not only because of their age and historical significance, but because they are rare and growing rarer by the day. The coin's obverse features in the center the profile of former President Abraham Lincoln. Joining the image of the former president is an inscription to his left which reads, Liberty, as well as an inscription to his right, which marks the 1942 year of minting. Finally, the phrase, In God We Trust, is seen arching over top. On the coin's reverse, the central aspect is dominated by two inscriptions, one that reads United States of America and one that reads One Cent, the coin's face value. To the left and right of the central inscriptions are two single stalks of wheat, which helps explain why this coin is sometimes referred to as the wheat penny. Finally, the Latin phrase E Pluribus Unum is arching over top. Grading the 1942 Lincoln Penny for collectors, the most important aspect of a coin as old as the 1942 Lincoln is the condition in which it is in. For this reason, you will notice that any Lincoln Penny worthy of a collection will be graded. Below you will find an outline of the different coin grades as well as an explanation with regard to what that grade means. Uncirculated. A coin that is graded as being uncirculated is one that never spent any time exchanging hands. Thanks to this, its condition has been well preserved such that the raised lettering and imagery will remain flawless. As you might expect, these are the cream of the crop and also the most sought after Lincolns. Extremely fine. A coin that is determined to be of extremely fine grade is one that will look mostly pristine, but will feature one or two minor flaws. Usually these flaws are small and are not easily recognizable by the naked eye. Nonetheless, they are there and that is all that matters to graders. Fine. A coin that is of fine grade has likely been circulated, but has also managed to avoid any sort of heavy damage. You will definitely notice some light scratching and smoothing due to years of changing hands, but the main lettering and imagery will be easily made out. Good. Good is the grade given to the most heavily damaged Lincoln pennies. From deep scratches to the complete wearing away of imagery lettering, these coins have definitely seen their better days. Despite this, they are still valuable to collectors of all types. Pricing the 1942 Lincoln Penny, determining a nominal value for the 1942. Lincoln is something that depends on a few different factors. First, the condition of the coin means everything. 
If a coin is damaged, its value will be detracted from. Secondly, the type of coin is important. There were up to three different types of Lincoln pennies minted every year, so the type plays a major role in determining a coin's value. Below is a chart that will help you determine how much a 1942 Lincoln is worth. Lincoln wheat cents appeal to three large groups of followers, advanced collectors seeking mint state coins and building high quality condition sets. A second affordable approach is pursued by collectors assembling collections of circulated grade examples. Thirdly, many accumulate quantities of pennies, establishing a base value to all wheat cents. A complete value chart of the wheat series shows the three collecting approaches identified by the large separations in value depending on condition. Mint state coins sought by advanced collectors are well ahead of all circulated grade coins in value. Pennies dated 1909 to 1933 in circulated grades are worth a premium and appeal because of affordability. A breakpoint in value occurs in 1934 to 1943, separating extremely fine grade coins from the rest. From 1944 to 1958, the separation in value is between circulated and mint state grades with most circulated coins close in value. If you're like most of us, a 50 cent piece sure did seem like a treasure when you were a kid. Turns out that half dollar might actually be worth a lot. Some of the most valuable half dollars sell for thousands or even millions of dollars to collectors who prize them. Even beyond their face value, many half dollar coins actually contain real silver. This gives them intrinsic value, even if they are worn or have seen heavy circulation. Knowing what to look for can help you spot the most valuable half dollars in your pocket change or coin bank. No matter what type of coin you're collecting, there are a few things that can make it valuable. One is rarity. Pieces with minting mistakes or super low mint numbers are more valuable than those with a lot of examples. Another factor is condition. A coin in near-mint condition will always be worth more than the same coin in rough shape. The thing is, with silver dollars, there's a third factor at work. Metal content. Every half dollar minted before 1971 contained silver, most valuable Kennedy half dollars. The very most valuable half dollars tend to be the oldest, but that doesn't mean that modern examples are only worth 50 cents. The Kennedy half dollar was first issued in 1964, and they saw very heavy circulation during the 1960s. They were 90% silver in 1964, although this was reduced to 40% silver the next year and phased out completely in 1971. The most valuable Kennedy half dollars are those from 1964, one in pristine condition sold for $108,000 in 2019. One of the most important things to remember on your hunt for Kennedy half dollar coins is that 1964 was the only year they were minted with 90% silver, or 0.36169 ounces. Beginning in 1965, the Kennedy halves were minted using only 40% silver, just 0.1479 ounces. Collectors aggressively hoarded the original President Kennedy half-dollar coin, both for commemorative reasons and the silver content. The price of silver was going up at the time, and some collectors even melted down the Kennedy dollars to harvest the silver. As a result, the coin wasn't as widely circulated as earlier half dollars. In 1971, the U.S. Mint eliminated silver from the Kennedy half dollar and ramped up production. Over 155 million 1971 Kennedy half dollar coins were minted, minted from 75% copper and 25% nickel for the first time in 1971, the Kennedy coin was not heavily circulated. In 2014, a new Kennedy half dollar, 99.99% pure gold, was produced at the Philadelphia Mint to commemorate the coin's 50th anniversary. Only 73,772 were made. Recently, the U.S. Mint and Federal Reserve announced minting Kennedy half dollar coins for general circulation for the first time in 20 years. What is the value of a 1971 Kennedy half dollar? Values range from 0 0.50 cents to $1.65 for ungraded circulated 1971 Kennedy half dollars. For graded coins, PCGs reports an auction record of $13,000 for an MS68D Kennedy half dollar for an eBay sale in 2018. Half dollar value guides. The half dollar is a 50 cent coin that has gone through numerous changes throughout its lifetime. It first appeared in 1794 and its current version features JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and the 1972 half dollar is a JFK as well. 
let's look into the background of this often neglected denomination so we can reliably validate the true 1972 half dollar value. The obverse head side of the 1972 half dollar features a profile portrait of John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States. Most people called him Jack or JFK. He popped onto the coin in 1964, a year after the admired leader was assassinated. His image faces left, with liberty curved around his head and the minting year along the lower collar. The mint mark appears directly above the mintage year, and the designer's initials, GR, are hidden under JFK's neckline. In God We Trust is stamped on the sides of his neck with In God on the left and We Trust on the right. The obverse was designed by Gilroy Roberts in 1964. He was the chief mint engraver from 1948 to 1964, so it was sort of his parting gift. The reverse tail side of the 1972 half dollar bears the official seal of the United States president. The seal is an eagle with 13 arrows in one claw, an olive branch in the other, and a shield covering its chest. It's circled by 50 stars with 13 more dotting the inner part of the seal, which has light rays and a banner or ribbon that says E Pluribus Unum near its head. The seal also has 13 puffs of cloud. This reverse was designed by Frank Gasparro, the chief mint engraver from 1965 to 1981. His initials, FG, appear above the tail on the right. United States of America is written along the upper collar while the denomination 50 cents runs along the lower collar. The coin has two dots that help separate the two legends. Special sets of the Kennedy half dollar were made in pure silver or pure gold, 0.9999, while some collector's editions were minted in 90% silver. But the 1972 half dollar was a regular edition with a core of 91.67% copper and a top coat of 8.33 nickel. So let's analyze its value. Over 150M half dollars were released from the Philadelphia Mint in 1972, but like the other JFK half dollars, most were hoarded and later melted, so not many exist in graded condition. This makes them tough to evaluate. Most 1972P, no mint mark, coins are only worth their face value of 50 cents, though in MS67 you can get as much as $10,000 for one of these coins. In 1972, Close to 150M half dollars came out of Denver, slightly less than the volumes from the Philadelphia Mint. Most of these coins are only worth their 50 cent face value. But some copies don't have FG on the reverse, and those can sometimes earn a premium. In 2016, a no FG 1972D half dollar sold for $7,485.13. In February 2020, an MS64 plus sold for $17,500. Join us as we delve into the factors that contribute to the value of these coins. Don't forget to subscribe seven vividly. Tone 1965, Kennedy half dollar graded in Mint State 67 by PCGs. According to grading service, this is the second year of issue for the Kennedy half dollar series. This year, the Mint changed the composition of circulation strike Kennedy half dollars from 1965 to 1970. Circulation strike Kennedy halves were produced from 40% silver and 60% copper nickel. In 1965, the mint also introduced special mint sets, which contained coins that were struck with a different finish than that of uncirculated and proof coins. The special mint sets were only sold to collectors and were produced from 1965 to 1967. PCGs reports 41 specimens in MS67 grade with none numerically finer. It was sold for $2,100, number 6, 1961 Franklin, half dollar with double die reverse graded as PR64 by PCGs, according to Heritage Auctions. A near gem specimen of the classic naked eye Franklin half dollar double die, an error rendered all the more embarrassing by its existence on a proof coin. Both sides are minimally toned with a faint suggestion of contrast. It was sold for $2,820 number May 19th, 68 D. Kennedy half dollar with peripheral rainbow toning on both sides. A marvelous specimen in superb gem condition graded as Miss 67 plus by PCGs. Vivid two-sided toning paints this high-end superb gem in concentric crimson, pine, green, violet, gold, and russet hues. The strike is sharp and I appeal is stunning, pristine beneath the patna. It was sold for dollar four thousand nine hundred twenty, number four one nine four nine Franklin, half dollar in Miss sixty seven condition with full bell lines. 
This is a beautifully preserved superb gem example of the 1949 Franklin half, showing a full strike and undisturbed satiny mint luster. Freckled olive gold and blue-gray toning characterizes each side, providing ample eye appeal and blatant originality. The quality stands out even beneath the loop. It was sold for $6,900, number 3, 1953 Franklin half dollar and missed 67 condition with full bell lines. 1953, Franklin half dollar claims a small business strike mintage of 2.6 million pieces. Unfortunately, the issue was not well produced and the typical example seen has a weak strike, insipid mint luster and unattractive toning. Accordingly, the 1953 issue is extremely rare at the Miss 67 grade level, and the coin shown here is the only superb gem certified by PCGS with the full Bell Lines designation. It ended up selling for $19,200, number 21921D Walking Liberty Half Dollar graded in Mint State 64 Plus by PCGS. The 1921D boasts the lowest mintage in the Walking Liberty Half Dollar series. At only 208,000 coins, it is scarcer than the Philadelphia issue of this year, but not quite as elusive as the San Francisco product. Examples are occasionally seen in Miss 64, but seldom finer. CAC recognizes the outstanding quality for the grade with outstanding eye appeal. The strike is sharp in the centers, and each side displays ivory, white luster, and satiny texture. No obtrusive abrasions are seen. It was sold for $24,120. Number one, this is 1964, Kennedy Half Dollar NPR 69 Deep Cameo Condition, Highly Elusive Accented Hair Variety. The Cherry Pickers reference states the accented hair variety is identifiable by the enhanced hairlines in the central area of the hair just below the part. However, the easiest way to identify the variety is the weak or broken lower left serif of the eye in Liberty. This variety comprises a minority of the proof 1964 Kennedy half dollar population although it is not universally scarce as many examples are certified. The rarest examples are those in the deep cameo category, and these coins are conditionally rare in high grade. This specimen fetched the sum of $30,001.20 at auction. That's all, folks. If you'd like to delve deeper into the world of U.S. coins, feel free to explore our other videos available on our YouTube main page. We appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you again in our future content. Gods will see you in the next episode. 1968 Kennedy half dollar in more detail before you sell your 1968 Kennedy dollar. You might not find it intriguing that this coin was produced at both the Denver Mint and the San Francisco Mint. Let's just jump straight into this movie S first for a little bit of historical context, but there are some specific things to note about it. These Kennedy half dollars in the U.S. have no mint mark whatsoever between 1965 and 1967. When the Kennedy half dollar was issued in 1968 with a D-mint stamp, this situation altered. Difficulties with the mint mark this year, such as the estimation mark that was inadvertently placed upside down. There aren't many of these left, but the ones that do survive are now very expensive. Additionally, certain D-mint markings include small RE punches that are worth keeping an eye out for. There are also some triple die obverses where the writing is tripled primarily on the words we and trust. Let's now examine the coin in more detail. The year 1968 is displayed at the bottom of the front behind the word Liberty. Kennedy's name is below the mint mark and to the left and right respectively are the words in God and we trust. Interesting stuff to the date's thick eight should be noted because it stands out from the other numerals. Now, the image of the United States of America around the top of the coin with an eagle holding an olive branch and arrows in its talents has remained constant across time, and the words half dollar are at the bottom. A mint state 68 coin is worth a stunning $15,000, but the value decreases noticeably in lower grades which is essentially how the coin is graded. Recall that the highest grade currently is a 70. There were 247 million Kennedy half dollars created in total in 1968 at the Denver Mint. No coins were made at the Philadelphia Mint. Also remember that the San Francisco Mint produced 3 million proof half dollar coins, all of which bear the S Mint symbol. Now, the coin you are looking at on the computer might look nice, but you could actually get it online for a few bucks. This is a copy as you can see over there on the left. There are fake coins out there, so you should be cautious. You do not want to be taken advantage of or scammed.
the hue of this coin is just insane. This oxidation process, which collectors refer to as tone, does occur in nature. This can either be a good thing or a negative thing, depending on where you keep your coin. Thing. $4,920 was paid for this coin. This coin was evaluated by PC Jazz and received the top grade of 70. This hardly ever occurs because it's extremely challenging to achieve that high of a grade, as evidenced by the projected mark for the San Francisco Mint down below. Distinguished guests, the price of this coin was $21,600. Our coin and AMP currency mastermind program is now available if you want to ensure that you never again doubt the worth of your coins or bills. To find out more, click the video link on the current screen. We'll see you inside after you proceed. It's interesting to note that some 1985 quarter coin value, errors list, D, S, and P mint mark worth. Do you own a 1985 quarter and are curious whether it is worth any money? Are you a George Washington fan interested in adding a 1984 quarter to your collection? We wrote this guide just for you. Washington quarters are collectible because they commemorate our country's first president, George Washington. Some may be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars if you know what to look for. This guide will teach you everything you need to know about the 1985 quarter value. Ultimately, you will make a smart decision whether you want to buy or sell your quarter. We'll explore the coin's history, features, grading tips, and most importantly, find out how much is a 1985 quarter worth. So let's jump in and discover the value of a 1985 quarter. The history of the 1985 Washington Quarter dates back to 1932, when the United States struck the first Washington Quarter as part of George Washington's bicentennial birth anniversary celebrations. Initially, a bicentennial committee established by Congress proposed the creation of a Washington half dollar by replacing the Walking Liberty half dollar for one year only. However, Congress passed legislation for a permanent Washington Quarter to replace the Standing Liberty Quarter. Part of the legislation required that the new Washington Quarter depict a portrait of our country's first president on the obverse. The Bicentennial Committee had earlier chosen sculptor Lauren Fraser to design the Bicentennial Commemorative Medal and wanted her to use this design as inspiration for the creation of the newly proposed quarter. Both the Committee and Commission of Fine Arts supported Fraser and had expected that she would be the official coin designer of the new Washington Quarter. To their surprise, Treasury Secretary Andrew Mellon rejected Fraser and hosted a competition to elect another coin designer. At the end of the competition, Mellon chose John Flanagan as the official designer for the newly proposed Washington Quarter. After several iterations, Flanagan finally presented an acceptable design for the quarter that would replace the Standing Liberty Quarter. The new quarter was struck and released into circulation by August 1932. The mint struck the coin in silver until 1965, when the composition of the Washington Quarter changed to copper nickel clad due to the ever increasing silver prices. The design remained largely the same on the obverse and reverse, only changing in 1975 and 1976 for the United States bicentennial. Washington Quarters featured the double date 1776 to 1976 for these two years. The 1985 quarter retains much of Flanagan's design on the obverse and reverse. Millions of these coins were struck across all three minting facilities in Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. The features of the 1985 quarter. Let's now look at the physical attributes of the 1985 quarter. Knowing a coin's appearance and unique features can help you grade and identify 1985 quarters worth money. On the obverse of the 1985 quarter, you will see the left-facing portrait of President George Washington. The coin's designer, John Flanagan, based this portrait on a 1784 bust of Washington created by sculptor Jean-Antoine Houdon. The motto, In God We Trust, appears on the left surface, while the date, 1985, can be seen at the bottom around the inner rim. The word liberty appears prominently at the top, above Washington's head. You will also notice the mint mark on the right surface behind Washington's ponytail. The mint marks P and D are for coins struck in Philadelphia and Denver, respectively. 2021 quarter coin value, errors list D, S, and P mint mark worth. 2022 Dr. Sally Ride quarter coin value, errors list D, S, and P mint mark worth. 2023 Bessie Coleman quarter coin value, errors list D, S, and P mint mark worth. 2000 penny coin value, errors list D, S, and no mint mark worth. 2022 
Maya Angelou quarter coin value, errors list D, S, and P mint mark worth. Does A 1971 quarter have silver? No, the 1971 quarter didn't have a silver composition. It was made of 91.67% copper and 8.33% nickel. The diameter is 24.3 mm and the weight is 5.67 grams. However, if you find a quarter that was struck on or before 1964, you have a silver quarter. From 1932 to 1964, the quarter dollar was most likely made of silver. The 1971 quarter bears the image of George Washington on the obverse side. At that time, he was facing towards the left, which is different from what you see in the current quarter, which has Washington facing the right. On top of Washington's bust is the word liberty. Just under Washington's chin is the inscription, In God We Trust. Below the bust of Washington is where you see the year, 1971. On the reverse side, you'll find the American eagle with its wings spread out and its feet perched on a branch with olive leaves. On top of the head of the eagle is the U.S. motto, E pluribus unum, which means out of many, one. On the uppermost are the words, United States of America. On the lowest part, you'll find the inscription, Quarter Dollar. The 1971 Washington Quarter was designed by John Flanagan. The Quarter Dollar, or Quarter for short, is worth 25 cents. The coin's obverse has long featured George Washington's bust. However, the reverse side has undergone various design changes after 1998. 1971 Quarter Varieties. There are different 1971 quarter varieties, and what made them different is their mint marks. As you may already know, there are three main minting headquarters in the United States. These are in Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco, which gave rise to the 1971 quarter varieties. Year, 1971. Mint mark, D metal composition, copper, 91.67%, and nickel, 8.33%. Price, 25 cents to $6.50 or more. Face value, 25 cents number of produced coins, 258,634,000. Weight, 5.67 grams. Edge, reeded. 2,000 penny value. See which 2,000 pennies are worth more than face value plus a list of valuable 2,000 penny errors. Did you know there are several kinds of 2,000 pennies that are worth more than face value? In fact, if you started looking through your coin jar or pocket change, there's a good chance you would find a 2,000 penny worth much more than just one cent. But before you start searching for rare and valuable 2,000 pennies worth big bucks, you need to know exactly what you're looking for. Following are the features to look for on your 2,000 pennies that will reveal if you have a valuable 2,000 penny or not. How much is a 2,000 penny worth today? There are three types of 2,000 pennies and each has a different value. 2,000 penny value, no mint mark. The 2000 Lincoln penny with no mint letter under the date was struck at the Philadelphia Mint, which did not add mint marks to its pennies at the time. Therefore, a 2000 penny with no mint mark is normal and is one of the more common coins found in spare change. The Philadelphia Mint struck 5,503,200,000 pennies in 2000, so the coin is extremely common and can be readily found in circulation. Because the 2000 penny is so common, Worn examples have no extra value unless the coins contain errors or varieties. A typical 2,000 penny that you find in your pocket change is worth its face value, or one cent. But that doesn't mean all 2,000 pennies are worth only face value. Uncirculated 2,000 pennies, those that have no wear and have never been spent as money, are worth more than face value. The average uncirculated 2,000 penny is worth 10 to 30 cents. Some are even worth more than that. The most valuable 2000 Lincoln penny without a mint mark was graded MS69RD by Professional Coin Grading Service and sold for $3,220 in 2008. 2000D penny value. See how much a 2000D penny is worth today. The 2000D penny was struck at the Denver Mint in Colorado. That mint places a little D mint mark underneath the dates of the pennies it strikes. There were a total of 8,774,220,000 2,000D pennies made, making them extremely common. Unless you find a 2,000D penny with an error or variety mentioned below, your 2,000D pennies are worth face value or one cent. Uncirculated 2,000D pennies, those which have no wear and have never been spent as money, are worth 10 to 30 cents apiece. Especially nice uncirculated 2,000D pennies are worth far more. 
the most valuable 2000D penny ever sold in a public auction, was graded MS69RD by Professional Coin Grading Service for a whopping $2,415, 2000S penny value. The United States Mint in San Francisco struck a relatively small number of special 2000 pennies for collectors. These collectible 2000S proof pennies were struck twice on high tonnage presses using specially prepared dies and polished blanks to impart a beautiful mirror-like surface and help show every detail. The 2000S pennies saw a mintage of 4,047,993 pieces, which is significantly smaller than the billions upon billions of circulation strikes made in Philadelphia and Denver. The U.S. Mint didn't distribute 2000S pennies into circulation, but rather sold them in 2000 proof sets, which also contain proof versions of other coins made during that year. Some common 2000D pennies that have no errors or varieties are worth more than face value. Which ones are they? A typical 2000S penny sells for $3 to $5. The most valuable 2000S proof penny sold for much more. In 2004, someone paid $2,645 for a 2000S penny graded by Professional Coin Grading Service as PR70D Scam, a numismatically perfect grade. Important. What is the grade of your 2000 penny? To determine the true value of your 2000 Lincoln cent, you first need to know what condition or grade your coin is in. One of the most popular errors on a 2000 penny is the 2000 wide AM error. You'll be able to tell if you have a 2000 wide AM penny by flipping it over, so you're viewing its back, also known as the reverse side of the coin. If the bottoms of the letters A and M are touching in the word America, you have a normal 2000 penny. If there's an obvious gap between the bases of the letters, you have a 2000 wide AM error penny.